Not chlamydia, not gonorrhea. Could it be Mycoplasma genitalium? This stealth STI is often overlooked, quietly spreading through our communities. It causes persistent urethritis, cervicitis, and even infertility. With rising antibiotic resistance and vague symptoms, it's a growing concern. If you're treating every discharge like it's gonorrhea or chlamydia, think again. Let's uncover the hidden threat of Mycoplasma genitalium. It's earning the title of the next superbug in sexual health. Welcome to Quick IM with Dr. Aid. This clinical update on Mycoplasma genitalium will provide an in-depth look at this significant pathogen and current treatment guidelines. This presentation is for educational purposes only. Mycoplasma genitalium is a unique bacterium with a pleomorphic shape measuring 0.2 to 0.7 micrometers. It possesses the smallest known genome and notably lacks a cell wall, which contributes to its resistance to certain antibiotics. First isolated in the 1980s, Mycoplasma genitalium, also known as Mycoplasmoids genitalium, was discovered in London. It is a sexually transmitted infection linked to urethritis, cervicitis, and pelvic inflammatory disease. How common is Mycoplasma genitalium? Let's delve into the prevalence and distribution of this infection in various populations. Did you know Mycoplasma genitalium is now a common STI? According to the CDC's 2025 data, it's prevalent among sexually active individuals. In the U.S., about 1.7% of people aged 14 to 59 are affected, but in urban clinics, that number may be as high as 16 to 17%. Both symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals are impacted equally. Adolescents and young adults are hit hardest, with rates around 3.9% in those aged 20 to 29. Non-Hispanic black individuals see even higher rates, especially in the South Central U.S. Mycoplasma genitalium is a rising public health challenge, silently spreading and growing resistant to treatment. Transmission of Mycoplasma genitalium occurs through vaginal, anal, and potentially oral sex. Research is ongoing to fully understand its spread, including genital-to-genital -genital contact. Awareness of these pathways is vital for prevention. Those at risk for mycoplasma genitalium infection include sexually active individuals, especially with multiple partners, inconsistent condom use, and a history of other sexually transmitted infections or STIs. Men who have sex with men are also at increased risk. The rise of mycoplasma genitalium is attributed to improved detection methods, asymptomatic carriers, antibiotic resistance, and low public awareness. These factors contribute to its increasing prevalence. Symptoms of mycoplasma genitalium vary between men and women, including discharge, pain, and irritation. Persistent or recurrent symptoms necessitate medical evaluation to prevent complications. In men, mycoplasma genitalium is a recognized cause of non-gonococcal urethritis, typically presenting with urethral discharge, dysuria, or urethral irritation. In some cases, it may lead to epididymitis, characterized by scrotal pain, tenderness, and possible swelling. Additionally, in men who engage in receptive anal intercourse, M. genitalium can cause proctitis, presenting with rectal pain, discharge, or tenesmus. Women infected with mycoplasma genitalium may present with a range of genitourinary and reproductive symptoms. Common manifestations include abnormal vaginal discharge, often mucoid or purulent in nature, and dysuria, reflecting urethral or cervical inflammation. Pelvic or lower abdominal pain may suggest ascending infection, particularly when associated with pain during sex, known as dyspareunia, or tenderness on examination. Additionally, women may report intermenstrual bleeding, postcoital bleeding, or menstrual irregularities, which are often signs of cervicitis or endometritis. In more severe or untreated cases, the infection can progress to pelvic inflammatory disease. Complications of mycoplasma genitalium can be severe, affecting reproductive health and increasing the risk of infertility. Mycoplasma genitalium is an emerging sexually transmitted infection that can cause significant reproductive complications in both men and women. In men, it is a recognized cause of persistent or recurrent urethritis despite standard treatment, 
and has been associated with epididymitis and a potential risk for male infertility. In women, it can lead to cervicitis, endometritis, and pelvic inflammatory disease, increasing the risk of infertility, ectopic pregnancy, and chronic pelvic pain. Moreover, mycoplasma genitalium infection is linked to increased susceptibility to other STIs, including HIV, due to mucosal inflammation and epithelial disruption. The worst part? Many people show no symptoms, and antibiotic resistance is rising. Stay informed and protect your health. Testing for mycoplasma genitalium is advised if symptoms like discharge or pain occur. Open communication with healthcare providers is crucial for determining the need for testing and appropriate care. Diagnosing mycoplasma genitalium requires appropriate collection of clinical specimens to ensure accurate detection, as the organism is often present in low concentrations and may be missed with suboptimal sampling. In men, the preferred specimen is first void urine, which captures the initial portion of the urine stream and is more likely to contain the bacteria shed from the urethra. Alternatively, urethral swabs may be used, particularly in symptomatic individuals. For women, vaginal swabs are considered the most sensitive and reliable method for detecting mycoplasma genitalium, especially in asymptomatic cases, while endocervical swabs are also acceptable. Although urine samples can be tested in women, they are generally less sensitive. Therefore, if clinical suspicion remains high despite a negative urine result, a vaginal swab should be obtained. Proper specimen selection is critical for accurate diagnosis and guiding appropriate treatment. To emphasize, the optimal clinical specimens for diagnosing mycoplasma genitalium are first void urine for men and vaginal swabs for women, as these sample types significantly improve the sensitivity and diagnostic accuracy of testing. Confirming the diagnosis of mycoplasma genitalium infection includes NAATs, the gold standard for detection. NAAT stands for Nucleic Acid Amplification Test. It is a highly sensitive molecular diagnostic technique used to detect the genetic material of pathogens, such as mycoplasma genitalium, even when present in very small amounts. Culture is slow, taking up to six months, while resistance testing for macrolide mutations is recommended if available. Antibiotic resistance is a growing concern, with rising resistance to azithromycin and moxifloxacin. Resistance-guided therapy and adherence to treatment guidelines are essential for effective management. Current guidelines for treating mycoplasma genitalium recommend a two-step approach to improve effectiveness and reduce resistance. Initial treatment with doxycycline for seven days is used to reduce bacterial load, followed by either azithromycin, if macrolide sensitive, or moxifloxacin, if macrolide resistant or resistant status unknown. Resistance testing is encouraged where available, and test of cure is advised three to four weeks after treatment. Sexual partners from the past 60 days should also be treated, and patients should abstain from sex until treatment is completed and symptoms resolve. This regimen follows the current CDC recommended treatment guidelines. After treatment for mycoplasma genitalium, it's crucial to wait until symptoms resolve before resuming sexual activity. Reinfection is possible, highlighting the need for safe practices and partner treatment. Public health measures for mycoplasma genitalium include using condoms correctly and maintaining monogamous relationships. Research into vaccines and improved testing is ongoing to enhance prevention efforts. Up next, essential takeaways. Mycoplasma genitalium may be tiny, but its impact on public health is massive. As rates rise quietly, resistance to antibiotics is growing. This sneaky pathogen challenges our ability to diagnose and treat effectively. Its silent spread and often hidden symptoms highlight a critical issue. We need to raise awareness, push for targeted testing, and practice responsible antibiotic use. In the world of STIs, mycoplasma genitalium reminds us what we don't test for can still do serious harm. Thank you for joining this presentation on mycoplasma genitalium. 
For further information and updates, stay connected with QuickM with Dr. Aday. Your engagement in this topic is vital for advancing public health.